if scientists tell you that a fault line is alive and that it is also connected with volcanic eruptions and they say the connection to the seismic activity is surprising you should be concerned and if that's all happening underwater you should even be more concerned in my opinion hi everyone this is a very interesting story about underwater mud volcanoes that are baffling scientists because they are basically on a fault line in an area where you might not really expect it Scientists were diving to the bottom of a lake with a robot and the robot has discovered a mystery where scientists are scratching their heads, guys. And I think you will find that interesting. Lake Baikal, icy and cold, one of the world's largest freshwater and lakes and oldest and deepest freshwater lakes. That's why if a lake is so deep, there's still some mysteries that haven't been discovered yet. So a robotic expedition has uncovered stunning geological secrets that were previously hidden beneath the surface. Lake Baikal is known for its extreme depth of 1,642 meters. That's a whole mountain, guys. And it has a unique biodiversity. Because of that, Lake Baikal has always fascinated scientists. But now they have discovered something gives you, how do you call that? <laughs> Chicken skin? They have discovered erupting mud volcanoes on the bottom of the lake. So, whoopsie, what is that? So this happened during the summer of 2023 when a team of researchers has deployed an autonomous underwater vehicle, they call them AUV, um, into these cold and hostile deep waters of Lake Baikal. And they have... With this expedition, they thought, let's focus on the Northwestern Basin and let's see what's going on there. And then all of a sudden, they looked at their cameras when they were sending the robot over to, to scan the ground and to film the ground. They were looking and they're like, what the heck is this? So they saw something bubbling, something coming out there. And then, of course, seasoned scientists quickly said, that's a bubbling volcano, that's a mud volcano. So the, robber, the robot was able to capture this stunning footage. And these volcanoes are erupting at a depth between 100 and 165 meters. So not at the, at the deepest point of the lake, but who knows, this is what they found. And there's two key regions where these mud volcanoes are bubbling and actively erupting. Malaya Koza Bay and Goryachinskaya Bay. Scientists did know that there might be some mud volcanoes in the lake, but they had not anywhere near anticipated the activity at such depth and so close to something else to a fault, the Severobaikalsk fault. So we have a fault line and we have volcanoes erupting. That is a combination that we don't like, but we're interested in that, right guys? So this is a very, very significant discovery. These eruptions close to the fault zone. And the problem is, the Severobaikalsk Fault is active. It's also a tectonically active region that now has active mud volcanoes, underwater volcanoes. So the presence of these volcanoes suggests that there is a structural connection between the tectonic stress that is being built at this fault line and the volcanic activity. I mean, we know we have a lot of subduction zones along the Pacific Ring of Fire, 
Cascadia Fault on the west coast of Canada and the US, where one plate is subducting underneath the other, and the plate goes very, very deep down and then basically gets recycled there. It's hot there, it gets melted, and that's why magma is coming back to the surface and we see all these volcanoes there. Basically, the Pacific Ring of Fire, where we have all these subduction zones, we have 90% of the earthquakes and 70% of the world's volcanoes happening there. So that's why this is scientifically very, very significant. After this discovery, the scientists said, well, the fault is alive. We can definitely say that because there are several volcanoes erupting. And now, of course, structural geologists are all over the place to find out what that means because the new activity that they have found in this area could be a key factor um, or a key indicator for potential seismic threats, seismic events, meaning earthquakes in the region. Does that help predict them? So this could be a new way for the scientists to predict future earthquakes. And maybe if they learn something from there, they could transfer that to the Pacific Ring of Fire. They were very surprised about this connection to potential seismic activity. They didn't think that this would be possible. The mud volcanoes, we know, it's not a completely new phenomenon, but what is so unprecedented, that's why I have to describe this again, is the location at the fault line, but also the intensity, guys. The intensity of these mud eruptions. It's not just a tiny, teeny, tiny hole that's bubbling a little bit. I mean, we have, we see bubbles in the Campi Flegre area at the super volcano Campi Flegre. Just recently, people said, well, we see bubbles in the water. No, this is, this is really a, an eruption. It's unprecedented. And the Cerro, Severo Balisk Fault runs along the lake's northwestern shoreline. And then, since that was the area where they did their research, so they found these mud volcanoes and they seem to be linked or they seem to be appearing in the regions that are directly linked to the fault's seismic activity. So the connection between tectonic movements and mud volcanism could provide super, super valuable data for monitoring future earthquakes in the region. Maybe if they cannot predict them, but if one happens, then they learn what did the volcano do? What did the fault line do? So that might help them for the next one then. Because on that lake floor, they have found large scale deformation zones. There's a lot going on down there. And they have also found brittle fractures along the lake floor. And in the Gori Kaczynskaya Bay, the robot has found um, steep slopes that are covered in, in porous clay ridges. So where do they come from? Clay ridges? Yeah, small mud cones. That's where they're coming from. And some are even as small as five centimeters in height, but the, the robot was able to take pictures to, to, to find them. So this is a zone that has a very dynamic influence from the Severo Baikal's fault. And since they saw that several of these structures have appeared disrupted, recently disrupted, they are suggesting active volcanic eruptions. They're, they're also seeing that there's gas-saturated fluids that are escaping from beneath these sediment beds. And that is a sign that there is a link between mud volcanoes and tectonic activity. But they have also found similar activities in Solonso Vaya Bay. I hope I pronounce this right. Um, there's gas plumes that are aligned with an old seismic dislocation. 
And this alignment that they found there, they say, supports the theory that mud volcanoes could act as indicators for imminent seismic activity. Imminent. But something else was discovered that is also very interesting. So on the one side, they have these geological discoveries, but that robotic expedition has also revealed something else that is truly extraordinary. There's life thriving in the harsh cold waters of Lake Baikal. Yeah, and where is it? Around the mud volcanoes. That makes sense, right? The scientists have documented a variety of extremophiles around the mud volcanoes. These are organisms that can survive in extreme environmental conditions. These include amphipods, gastropods, planarians, and cotoid fish. So they seem to be thriving because of the mud volcanoes. They even found them hiding in the central vents of the mud volcanoes. So they probably like the warm area there. They also saw colonies of white sponges that were also observed attached to the rocky outcrops in that area. The presence of these organisms in such extreme conditions, the scientists say this is proof of adaptability to life in extreme conditions because these microbes and animals that they find around the volcano seem to have developed unique mechanisms to withstand these extreme pressures and low temperatures at depth of up to 165 meters. Interesting story, I thought you might want to know, but guys, check out my videos if you haven't seen them yet about that massive, massive landslide, the largest in at least 50 years in Alaska, that has led to a water displacement slash tsunami wave of 1,640 feet, you hear me right? And now we have pictures of what this did. The USGS and the Alaska Earthquake Center have now revealed graphs that show us and pictures, and we can even hear the seismic wave. So I have made an updated video about that. You should really check that out, but also my other video, my first video about that. And there's another threat to an even bigger landslide in the Berry Arm area. So to, one of my viewers commented, well, my name is Tracy and my husband's name is Barry. <laughs> like, Because I was reporting about the Tracy arm landslide and the impending Barry arm landslide. So you too, please behave. Do me that favor. Check out the links in the end screen if you want to support the channel, guys. Fill me up with coffee on my buymeacoffee.com slash silky site. Link is in the description of this video. Thank you so much. Welcome to all new channel members. If you click the join button, you can see private videos and behind the scenes stuff from me. Thank you for your supers, for your comments, for liking, for sharing, for subscribing. Click here and I see you in a second.